Hey there, CPO here, and I have another Real Flight 7 quick tip for you. This one involves slowing time. So I'm back in my practice session, and what I decided I wanted to work on a little bit was a uh, my pirouetting hovers, right? So I've gotten really good at orientation in all directions, but now I want to work on pirouetting, hovering, and being able to control the helicopter uh, as it's rotating around. It's kind of a fundamental, basic move uh, for 3D flight. The problem with it is uh, my brain sometimes doesn't move as fast as the helicopter does. And the older I get, the more I find this to be true. So I like to slow time down. So uh, one of the ways that I can do this is by just going into the uh, menu here for physics and then taking a look at what options are available to me. So as you can see here in the realistic mode, I have 100% physics speed. The flight model characteristics are going to be realistic, and there is no autopilot assist. So here in intermediate mode, you can see the physics speed is still at 100%, but the flight model setting is right in the middle of easy and realistic, which means some of the aerodynamic characteristics might be a little bit gentler, such as stall speeds and things like that. Probably less noticeable on a heli than it would be a, uh, a, an airplane. In beginner mode, we have uh, a reduced physics speed, 80% of our speed, a really easy to fly model, and we've also got a little autopilot assist, which is kind of like self-leveling. It, it tries to help you uh, keep the aircraft level. So what I like to do is start in realistic mode, because I want all of my heli aerodynamics to be realistic, and then I just move the speed down. So at this point, I'm gonna put it to about 50%, and it's just basically gonna slow how the helicopter reacts to my stick inputs. And as you can see here, I've got full rudder left, and that's as fast as it's pirouetting. It's at 50% speed, approximately. But that means I also have time to think about my moves as I do them. Uh, and you can see I can also give greater stick inputs on the right stick, uh, and uh, I'm not penalized as much because everything's at half speed. It just allows me to get my brain around what I want to do. For a pirouetting hover, you're basically timing the orientation of the tail and trying to make your adjustments consistently uh, at a certain point in the rotation. Some people do it every uh, you know, two points in a full rotation. Some people do it one. just depends on the speed uh, for a lot of people. But at any rate, it allows me the ability to think through what corrections I need to do. Now, you don't want to finish your practice in uh, reduced speed. So bump it back up to realistic because you want to get a feel for how the heli really is going to react. Now look at the difference with full rudder. It's, uh, it's really moving. So now I get it to a speed that uh, is reasonable for me. And, uh, and now my right stick inputs are very minimal. Uh, but I get a feel for the real heli. Uh, you'll really do yourself a disservice if you fly your simulator in slow speed and then go out and fly a real model in full speed. It will uh, probably shock you and, uh, and cost money. So... At any rate, that's it. Just a, another quick tip that I wanted to share with you. And, uh, you know, it's been helping me in my practice. Obviously, this isn't a how to do a pirouing hover video. There's plenty of other uh, great video instructors out there. I just wanted to show you, uh, in case you weren't familiar, how you can manipulate time in Real Flight 7 to help you in your practice sessions. So don't forget to subscribe uh, and uh, give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.